responsibility. They're doing it because they can, because the system is enabling that to happen. So I suppose at one level is change the nature of the assessment so that, for example, remembering or even being able to discuss <coughs> with, a, with another person is not the object of the assessment. It's fine for them to be able to do that kind of thing. The assessment must be making judgments about other things, like their <coughs> reflective capacity, their capacity to evaluate. Um, so we're not knowledge dependent in our assignment. So therefore the cheating element is reduced. Or we go the proctor route, where we make sure that we have a camera that says, this examination is available for these three hours, Central African time, and this is where you will sit, and you'll be monitored. I mean, to the nth degree, you can be monitored. I mean, analytics tells us this. We know, I know, for example, that there, there are cases where students' finger movements on the keyboard are monitored to make sure that they're not sort of, you know. So there are lots of ways, there are plenty of ways in which regulation can be employed. But I think it's more important to start with purpose. Why do we do this? And if it is that we're creating an exam setting, like we do with final year examinations very often, where the, where the high stakes exam is so strongly recall, we're encouraging a kind of learning that some students will do extremely well, and then they'll forget everything that they've learned. And we're encouraging the possibility that if we have to move into the um, off-campus space, that they can cheat. Well, then, you know, then we've got to go back to first principles. What are we assessing? Why are we assessing it that way? Can we do it differently? And still achieve what we want to achieve? Because mass, yeah, yeah, I'll stop there. Sorry. Uh, also, just linking on this, and I know it's going on over the same point, but so say, for example, next week our lectures stop and we have one final test we need to do for the module. And like, so for example, what happened last year, where you give students two hours, and so two hours should mean that there isn't time for them to collaborate with other students, they do it at home on their own. But then an hour later, certain students come and say they had internet access issues. And so, so we need to be sensitive to those kind of things, and we know at UWC those are genuine challenges, and we know that some students do have a genuine challenge. Mm. They couldn't get the transport to get to the library or the venue, and it's very difficult to determine which students had a genuine challenge. And then you see in the same test examples where students have copied and pasted word for word from each other, mm. but they gave the excuse that they had this challenge. Mm. So it's... So, and it's I, so the long-term solution is having venues and all of the other things that you've spoken about, but if this had to happen next week, I would... Yeah, so, so, so I think what we've learned about the pro through the protests over the last two and now this is the third year, is that we haven't been terribly proactive about intervening. I mean, so, so in a way, if the same things occur again this year as occurred last year and the year before, we really have ourselves to blame. I mean, then what the hell did we learn over the last three years that hasn't enabled us to change practice? And, then, and I know there are still colleagues of mine who will say, the final high stakes written examination is the gold standard. It is the only way in which we can assess students. And that's what we're going to do come hell or high water. Unfortunately, the hell and the high water were pretty, hell and pretty high. And so we couldn't do it. So then you have to go back to say, why is it that that single examination can't so much? What could we have done differently? We have to do that. There was a, yeah. Mm -hmm.
Um, you can even compare on an online platform saying, um, okay, this is the case. So do a voice over on what you think uh, is going on with the patient. And then for part two, that will have to be face to face. So do your blood pressure patient, do your assessments of what you think um, should be done, and then come up with your blood pressure. So it, it's, it's multi faceted also depending on this. I think, yeah, I mean, that's, you mentioned right at the end, they're multi, I mean, multiple forms of assessment are better than just one form of assessment, even even in the space where we know we're resource constrained and so on. So we've got to be quite creative and adaptive about those, about those approaches. The other point which is critical, and it's, I've said it before, I'll say it again, students have to be taken with us on this journey. So if we're going to change the way in which we do assessment, online, offline, wherever, we're going to have to enable students to understand that change and why it's happening and where it's coming from and what it takes for them to be prepared because they will understandably and reasonably respond and react to an assessment that they don't believe is fair. That's the biggest, the biggest red flag to students is it's not fair. So we've got to keep making sure that we do mean that. Um, just, just okay, then we're going to go on. Yeah. Um, there's different forms of learning that but they're good at memory, so they'll do very well at the things. Sure, sure. That doesn't mean that they're competent. Yeah. So the claims we can make about their learning are somewhat limited, and we need to be thinking about those claims. And, but there is an onus on us here again to, if we're going to change the forms of assessment, we will have to be able to defend those changes. We, we can't, it's not just whimsical stuff. We've got to have some theoretical and clearly argued base for the changes we make as well. And that sometimes is just exhausting for academics as well. Let's just stay with what we've got. Because there's so much else going on here. I'm so under pressure and I accept that. But that, that, that's just a bridge too far. Sorry, Betty. Yeah. And the issue that you mean the principles and the design. And something that I think is missing there is that you are considering the around the storage. Yes. Like data storage of all these electronic assignments. Yeah. And um, I think you know, you see, still sort of grappling, grappling with that in terms of looking at portals and places. But I had visual says last year, and it went down. Mm -hmm. So I had hundreds of scripts online, and they just suddenly got mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, just those mm -hmm. those considerations are kind of important. Very, very. Both at the individual level and also at the institutional level and perhaps even beyond because I think I sort of alluded to the questions about the record and about ethics and so on but and analytics, but yes, the institutional level attention to that and for that matter the cloud and you know there's the, I know there are huge debates about which is more secure, the cloud or Google or something else. We do need to pay attention to that stuff because those records <coughs> are forever. Or, or they disappear forever, which is even more disastrous. Somebody, somebody here had a question as well, or was it? Okay, so now. Um, my, my question is around quality, and, mm. and the fact that we've always done, yeah, we always do what we've always done, and so our institution has already uploaded the sit-down exams, mm. and if we look at the current climate, um, UCP has been decided, CPMP has been decided, my concern is that we're going to be asking more already internally and externally modulated papers into an online space. And so my question around how to do that without using quality, given the fact that it's being modulated, and so it's not just asking a question, discuss da 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 da, because that is going to mean that students are going to copy a place from Google, actually, um, or their classmates, and it, because we can't use the screen, we don't have a and even if we do, they can phone each other or Google on their phone. How do we... Oh. <laughs> I grapple with this because our marks make up our 5% from what we're saying. And it's a <coughs> the, quality issue. The, yeah, and the, and the quality question that you were raising earlier is... is but the, for me, the quality question is not a short-term question. You can't regulate quality or... It's, enable quality just the, the, what's happening now what you've created now is likely to happen is is going to have to just be managed whatever happens is going to have to be managed there's nothing really specific that you can do in this space right now if something goes wrong in the next week or two there isn't there isn't there's no magic silver bullet thing that you can do that makes this a more secure examination in the short term 
it's going, to, it's going to take some mechanism that says next time we have this kind of crisis, this is how we will respond. But we have to do it now before. Sorry, you've been there before. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what I said. If we haven't learned after three years, then, then something is going wrong here yeah, with the way in which we're doing. Either we're doing the wrong kinds of examinations, or we haven't got the systems in place, or you know, that type of thing, or we all ask the kinds of questions that enable students to download from Google and, and get the marks they want. Just, uh, my concern with this is that we, we've not picked our students for online mm. In the form of the, um, yeah. during the term. So now they're bombarded or just throwing and they're all Sure, that's that was the that yeah, that was the literacy or the mis that's the misalignment thing that I was that I was raising earlier. So so to put it in an online space now is to say, wow, we're presenting with a completely different we, we and, and in assessment terms, by the way, we're compromising validity by doing this. So we're not sure any little more that we're testing what we're really supposed to be testing. This. But we can't, I don't think there's a short term solution to these things. It's not addressable in a short term way. There were a couple of other comments or questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to say that we look, we're grappling with assessment and how we are going to assess mm. our students at the end. But we should also focus on our teaching practice. Yeah. We are working within the 21st century and there's many things that are available to us. And still, we always focus on an end of year exam that's going to tell us what our students know. And I think this is what, what we've been saying throughout this um, workshop already. And I just want to say that that's why we are also um, at UWC looking at the blended approach because we can't still focus on recall and memory when our students are coming in with different learning um, abilities and, and they've got different strengths and challenges. So, this is what is basically more what has been um, raised already. And then when we focus on also our culture needs to change, like you mentioned, from first year already, we need to instill, we're not just in the lecture, lecturing and asking our students to remember. We should engage, we should use our face-to-face -face contact sessions um, more, how can I say, more beneficial, more useful. Well, for students to engage, sure. etc. So the, the learning styles of our students have changed and our teaching practice should, should adapt should, should to that as well. And, and I think Ian's point partly was that, that when, when, the, when the conditions under which teaching and learning take place change so fundamentally, they are going to, they should have an impact on us. We can't simply say we'll continue doing things in exactly the same way as we've done before. And where I think, by the way, quality practices can play a strong role is they can be guiding, they can be, they can be um, providing us with, with good examples, examples of good practice elsewhere that can enable these kinds of mechanisms. That's, that can also help us to get away from it all being about sort of individual women idiosyncrasy so that people you know, just do what they feel like they do. That's okay, but somewhere along the line there needs to be some kind of guidance from some kind of institutional space. Question. Um, I think two years ago we were asked obviously to pick up all the assessments and going online. And everybody was like, no, and they're like, okay, no, you go, yes. Yeah. And we put the exam online, it was all great, but then students were uploading the exams, obviously beyond the time it was, they were supposed to do oh. so. And they were even in the tutors and as his lectures, so they're duplicating. And that was all taken because eventually which one do we mark? And I go, oh, excuse oh. the first one, mark this one. And then we also noticed that we gave them a three hour time and people and the main reason was they would email us and they would say, we don't have access to data, we don't have our own laptops. So two of us are working together, therefore we could only write one and a half pages for each of us. And one of the major concerns, because we need to look at the type of students we're getting here to not the UCT students, not the one of the students we're getting here. And then also, because we look at some of the student numbers and we look at how many students got this particular symbol, that particular we look at particular scripts and we look at these are of our best performing students. Why are they failing the exam? Mm -hmm. We call them into an interview in January once we settle down here and they are, it's because we don't know about typing. We cannot type fast. We need all our assessments living because we don't have laptops and you accept those work. So therefore, and I mean it's not free to give them that type of model. You know, that's not the caliber of students. And this experience has pushed us in a way to actually change how um, assessment schedule, so instead of having 
the major component of our plan towards the end of the semester now, we actually moved it in the term for you already. So we just switched it out. We've already done some quizzes online. <coughs> we had them unload and to drop off, so they are sort of familiar. So it's changing and also not just testing everything. We're looking at our main outcomes, our core components, and just doing that. Sure. So it's had it's had an impact on practice. You should you could be sharing these practices what with one another. I think that's a really important starting point. But it's also made given ground for reflection as to you know how are these things happening, why did things go wrong. There, you've also raised the valid the validity question. You know the, the the student, the particular kind of student whose whose work is decidedly compromised when they go into the online spaces compared to somewhere else. But there's also an education component too, you know, about getting enabling people to better do this kind of online assessment than, than is current. Okay, last yeah, question or comment. Yeah. Um, we have an interprofessional approach to teaching, right? Mm -hmm. So the assessments are group assessments. But very think on this year our group assessments yield definitely results to individual assessments. Okay, at the simplest level, making sure that the, the processes of grading, uh, feedback, moderation, those kinds of things are the same in, in the interdisciplinary space as they might be for the individual disciplines. But that's going to take learning. People will have to learn. They will have to look at other examples of practice. They will have to go to perhaps sources, other sources of, of that kind of data. Because that's, that's at one level what is happening in that process. It's simply people are not familiar with. So, they, they, so therefore validity again is under threat because we're, doing, we're marking or grading in ways that we're not used to grading. So we've got to learn by going to the profession, by going to literature, by going to colleagues by doing these things, I think also doing them in a formative way so that when the high stakes assessment happens, we've had some practice, not, not wait until the high stakes moment for, for the practice session to happen. Those kinds of things. Okay, I think we're gonna have to wrap up now. Um, we've had our two hours, but um, thanks very much for the extent of your contributions. Um, hopefully again, probably this has just started a debate and a discussion, but hopefully contributed to it as well. Yeah, man.